Today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions. Go ahead and write this on your paper. Adding and subtracting fractions. Now there's two way of adding and there's two ways of adding and subtracting fractions. One of them is with like denominator. The second one with, with unlike denominators. One is very easy, the other is very uh, more difficult. Not very difficult, but more difficult. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do it first with like denominators. Now denominators as we know, denominate, denominators. Now, as you can see, all right. First thing you need to know, and this is written in your book on the top of page 516. If you look in your book on page 516, please share with him. Can you move over here? Okay. On page 516, at the very top it says, adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. When, when the denominators are the same, all you have to do is add the top. For example, let's do one half. Now let's do one six. All right, let's scratch that out. Let's do one six plus three six. Okay. These are called like denominators. The denominator, as we know, is the bottom number. Now we're using correct term, which is denominator. We know that uh, denominator is what? Somebody raise your hand. What is the denominator? Yes, ma'am. Six. Six. The denominator is alike. It's the same. Please keep it the same. Please keep it the same. Do not switch that denominator. That denominator will always be six when you're adding and subtracting like denominators. Just move it over, all the way over, and write 6. You add the tops. You add the, what is that called? The numerator. Absolutely. Thank you. It's called the numerator. So you add that numerator. So what is 1 plus 3? 4. You're done. How easy is that? Now, I told you, adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators is easy. Let's do another one. Let's go to a new page here. Uh, let's go. Here we go. Uh, go ahead and take a look in your book. I see 2, 6 plus 4, 6. So we're going to, and you can label this number 2. 2, 6 plus 4, 6. All right, I need to know, what is the denominator of this problem right here? Somebody raise your hand uh, and tell me what the denominator is. Malik, what's the denominator? Absolutely, 6. So please keep the denominator the same. Absolutely, let's move this over here. So that equals, let's keep the denominator the same. Can somebody please explain to me what we do next? Mackenzie. You add the numerators. Absolutely. So let's take the numerator of this one, and let's add to it the numerator of this one. And what is 2 plus 4? 6. Now, if I have 6 squares, let me 1. Two, three. Please write this on your paper. Four, five, six. Okay. We know that the denominator tells us that there are six squares. How many of those squares are filled? Look right here. How many of those squares are filled? Six. So let's fill them all in. I'm just going to sketch on it real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So they're all filled in now. All six of them. How many are left unfilled? 
zero. That means if six over six and this is one group, guess what? This also equals one. Now let me tell you why that's equal to one, okay? This is equal to one because look, there's one group of six and that whole one group is filled. So it equals one, doesn't it? Okay, let's look at that concept again. Let's look at that concept again. If I have one, two, three in this group, okay, and all three of them are filled, then that's one whole, right? Let's ask this. What if I got a pizza? Okay, we're going to make pizzas this afternoon. What if I have a pizza and this pizza is split into, let's say, one, uh, you want to do eight pieces? Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do six pieces. Okay? We've got six pieces, and let me tell you, all the pieces are there. There's no pieces missing. So there's six pieces there. Is that one whole pizza? Yes. That's how it equals. So anytime you see the same number of numerator over the same number of denominator, then you know it's one whole. Same over same, one whole. It's when you start, that numerator starts getting smaller or starts getting bigger that you have less than a whole or more than a whole. Right now, we're only going to focus on a whole or less. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Number three, for our example purposes. Oh, let's see here. Let's do two-fifths plus four-fifths. Two over five plus four over five. Take a look at this. What's the denominator? Raise your hand. Frank. Five. Keep it the same. Five. What's the numerator? Tell me what to do. Absolutely. You're going to take this two and you're going to add it. Make sure you will always watch that sign. Oops. Computer glitch. Make sure I always watch the sign. And we're going to take that 2 and 4. And what does that equal? Um, six. 6 over 5. 6 over 5. You know what this is called? This is called a M proper. Sorry, N proper. N proper fraction. Write this down. This is important. An N proper fraction is when the numerator is bigger than the denominator. What this is telling me is that I have five pieces, one, two, that's a silly looking circle, three, four, five. I got five pieces in my, in my circle here, my weird looking circle, but six pieces are filled in. One, two, three, four, five, and guess what? There's the six. Uh-oh, that means we've got one that's sitting outside of the circle, isn't it? It's improper. So guess what? We've got to know that that's improper. How many pieces are in this group? Five. Five. This is called one, one hole. One hole, right? And then we have an extra one. Guess what we're going to call that? One-fifth. So we have one and one fifth. One hole, one hole, yep, one hole and one fifth left over. Okay, let's look at another one. I'll give you a second to write that down. All right, I want you to take a look at page 517 in your book and let's look at actual number one on page 517. Yep. At number one. I know we did one through three just a few seconds ago, but let's look at number one in the book. 
Number one in the book says three eighths plus three eighths equal. Please write that. Three eighths plus three eighths equals. Can somebody please tell me what I need to write? Yes, sir. What's the denominator going to be? Absolutely. Keep it the same. When adding and subtracting, the denominator always stays the same, or it has to be the same. See, these eights, if it was an eight and a nine, we've got trouble. But since it's an eight and an eight, we are perfect. Let's keep going. What do I do now? Yes. Add the three. So three plus three is six. Let me ask you this. Is these two numbers the same? No. No. Is this number bigger than this number? No. No. Then we got a good fraction. It's proper. It's not improper. It's not uh, a, a one. So let's go on to the next one. That's all you got to do. That's easy stuff. Number two. Uh, it's 3, 6 plus 4, 6. So 3, 6 plus 4, 6. Already I can tell you it looks like it's going to be an improper fraction, right? Improper? Good. Let's take a look at this. Somebody tell me what to do. Janae. What do I do? How do I get my denominator? That's the first thing we want to do. How do I get it? Do I add it? Did I add it up here? Did I add the denominator up here? Janae, look up here. Did I add it up here? No. So what do I do here? Absolutely, six needs to go there. Remember, I've got eight and eight. And you keep it the same. Six and six, you keep it the same. And then you add the top. What's three plus four? Four, five, six, seven. What is it? It's absolutely seven. Now, let me ask you, is these two numbers the same? No. No, but is this number bigger than this number? Yes. We call that improper. Write it. And proper. And here's what that means. I have a group here. Let me go ahead and mark, mark my box here. And inside this group is going to be how many? Six. Six. So let's draw a little six circles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many are filled in? All three. All four. Six. Seven. There's seven of them filled in. Well, one. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh oh. I ran out, so I must start a new group. Seven. So if we're going to make this into a proper fraction or a mixed number, what is it going to look like? Somebody tell me. Raise your hand. Tell me. Uh, Clara. I need to make this right. I, I, I need to make it proper. How do I do that? How many groups do I have? One and no. Well, let me help you with that. It's one, right? There's one left over, right? And what's the what's been the denominator the whole time? Six. So it's one six. You again. You keep the denominator the same. You keep it the same. If it's been 6, 6, then when you write it here, you're going to make it 1, 6, because it stays the same. Okay, yep. Let me record this. This is called, and I want everybody to write this, okay? Let me get this out of the way. I'll move it all the way up here. This is called a mixed number. And I'm going to write really small right here. But that says number. It's called a mixed number because you have a whole number 
and then you also have a fraction. Up here, this is not a mixed number because it's just a fraction. It's just a fraction. Down here, you have a fraction and a whole number, and so this is called a mixed number, okay? Now let's keep going.